The Xbox plan is uh, coming together to say the least, and they are finally going to be surpassing PlayStation in overall revenues, which is a goal that Xbox has been trying to do for a very long time. Obviously, they've had troubles with doing this as PlayStation has been a dominant player in the gaming market. Nintendo has also been dominant and there's other major players out there like Tencent but now with the ABK deal officially approved, officially gone through and being a part of Xbox, they are going to be ahead of Sony PlayStation putting Sony PlayStation in third spot for overall gaming revenues. Now this comes via a new analysis from newzoo.com where they're taking a look at the entirety of the gaming industry and there's some interesting stuff to come out of this, stuff that really points to why xbox is doing what they are doing getting abk trying to prove on the mobile side of things and and run their business in a more broad sense where they are reaching as many gamers as possible it says here microsoft has long touted its goal to become a top dog in the gaming industry while also stating that its eyes are on players like apple and tencent rather than playstation and nintendo in order to achieve those goals and we've seen that phil spencer talk about this multiple times it's not playstation and Nintendo that are their only competitors or even their main competitor at this point. They're knowing that there are bigger dogs out there that they have to go up against with the Apples, with the Tencent, with cloud gaming, with mobile gaming, where that is a huge part of the industry that is continuing to grow. And mobile being as big as it is, is going to be the main way that a lot of these companies try to increase their revenues and try to grow in the overall gaming industry against everybody else that is out there, whether that is native mobile gaming, whether that is getting people people to have cloud gaming and get into their ecosystem via their mobile phone all those things are going to play into getting bigger and, and going against the competition so in terms of the actual revenues it says that the uh, new zoo projects that the games industry will generate 184 billion in revenue for the entirety of the 2023 fiscal and they forecast that it will grow to 205.7 billion by 2026 so just absolutely massive and the majority of the gaming revenue remains in mobile but pc and console did see some growth so 49 percent of the overall revenue in gaming is from the mobile side of things and pc having 29 percent and console at 21 percent so you can see kind of the breakdown there that 49 percent is just huge again why xbox wants to target mobile why they are potentially going to build out their own mobile store to take on apple and google all of these things in these numbers really point to their their main reason but when it comes to the top companies in the industry tencent is number one and that isn't going to be changing but where we are going to see a major change, something that I don't think anybody would have saw coming is Microsoft now with Activision Blizzard are going to be surpassing Sony to move into the number two spot in terms of the game's revenue. You can see the list here go, go Tencent and Microsoft or Xbox and Activision Blizzard and then Sony at number three. So this is huge. I know they just got went out and purchased ABK, but with that purchase, they get some of the biggest franchises. And Sony is definitely looking at these numbers and they're seeing that they're going to slip down to number three. And this is why they're having to pivot and make all of these changes that they are doing within the PlayStation platform, knowing that they have to reach a broader audience. They can't focus on the console exclusives anymore the numbers don't make any sense anymore no matter how much playstation fanboys want to tout first party first party quality all that stuff those guys do not buy enough of the first party games to sustain playstation and they know that i mean we're even seeing it right now with Call of Duty being the number one played game on that platform makes them pretty much the most money every single year. And they're going to be paying so much of those Call of Duty revenues over to Xbox because they own it, which is just having huge shifts and huge shockwaves across the industry where this is a big change. And Sony has to be able to present to their shareholders why everything is going to be OK, and why they're going to continue to be able to grow and why we are seeing all of these major pivots, pivots with games as a service, with 
more PC games coming from Sony with opening up their ecosystem with the PlayStation Plus tiers. All of that type of stuff is in response here to Xbox, which is why I think PlayStation is going to be falling behind is because they are responding rather than acting ahead of the curve, which is what Xbox did when the Xbox One did not do well. They saw the future before PlayStation saw the future and said, we got to make these changes now going into the next generation and the generation after that, which is that ecosystem and getting rid of the exclusivity and getting as many people to play as possible. So I think this is interesting and we'll see how this all plays out in terms of what this means for games, what type of content is going to be coming out on each platform. We know with Xbox right now, the future is extremely bright with a huge diverse range of games in different genres, tons of developers out there. First party content is going to continuously be dropping right now with PlayStation. The reality of the situation is 2023 was a very bad year and looks like 2024 may not be that much better from their first party content output. And we don't know what other types of games are coming down the line for them. It's going to be the same thing over and over again until we start seeing some of those multiplayer games come out. What are those games as a service games? What are they going to have in store for everybody? I'm looking forward to it. I hope that they're able to bring out some great stuff. I don't want PlayStation to go away or to fail in any sense. We need that competition in gaming so that Xbox doesn't become complacent as well, which they kind of did after the xbox 360 generation we don't want that to happen but something like this is going to continue to push that competition and and sony's going to have to push back hard or there's going to be a big big switch here in terms of where most people are going to be playing their games now we think about playstation you think about what is the future it's a perfect segue into what they just announced which to me is just crazy that they're still going along these lines of releasing the same thing over and over and over again and that is the last of us part two remastered was officially announced for the playstation 5 so on january 19th 2024 it will be a first party playstation game but it's essentially just the re-release of the last of us part two i don't think anybody asked for this I really don't think anybody wants this, but you will see a bunch of people buying it and PlayStation knows that. There are going to be a lot of people complaining online as to why are they releasing The Last of Us again? I forget. I can't even remember how many times they've released the same game over and over again rather than take time and develop something new. But people are going to complain, but people are still going to go ahead and buy it which is why PlayStation continues to do this because they know their fan base is going to give them that money. So this is exactly what this upgrade is. It's going to be $10 to get you to the PS5 version of this game. Your saves will be able to carry over and it's also going to be coming with another game mode. There's also this physical edition where you get a bunch of stuff with it, which they will be releasing as well. But specifically, this is exactly what this remastered version has. It will feature enhanced graphics, including native 4K output in fidelity mode, 1440, p upscale to 4k in performance mode an unlocked frame rate option for tvs that support vrr increased texture resolution increased level of detail distances improved shadow quality animation and sampling rate and they will also have this new rogue like mode and they describe this mode as an experiencing the last of us 2's deep combat via an entirely new mode survive as long as you can in each run as you choose your path through a series of randomized encounters and it says you can play as a host of different unlockable characters some never before playable in the last of us franchise each with unique gameplay traits the variety of challenges feature different foes and memorable locations from throughout part two all culminating intense boss battles so ten dollar upgrade the price isn't anything that is bad i mean ten dollars whatever if you want to get the ps5 version but to me it's not about the price it's not about anything like that it's about the time that naughty dog is taking to make this that nobody asked for. A game that when it was initially released as well, a lot of people I don't think liked it as much as part one, the story a lot of people did not like with some certain aspects that happened early on that really turned people off from the game. So there's a lot with this game that nobody cared about, nobody really wanted. It sold very well and it did very well. I'm not saying that didn't happen, but for $10, whatever, the issue here is Naughty Dog spending all of this time 
making another remaster of a game that nobody wanted when they could have been using their time for developing new games, new IPs, a new project, even a, a new Uncharted game, something like that they could have been working on, but instead they're putting out another remastered game, which to me, as somebody who has a PS5, I play a PS5, I, I just did a review for the PS Portal, this has me zero excited. I have zero excitement for PlayStation going into 2024. I just, there's really nothing for me to look forward to because they're continuously just releasing the same thing over and over again. All right, let's jump over here. Let's talk about a game that's going to be coming into Xbox Game Pass, and that is Immortals of Avium. If you remember, this was that first person magic shooter. Unfortunately, it did not do very well as there were layoffs and everything. I feel like the release time that it was in hurt the game significantly. I've played through a decent amount of it. I haven't beaten it but it is a fun game the gameplay is tight the story is cool the characters are pretty awesome so it's definitely one of those games that i think a lot of people overlooked and when it does eventually drop into a subscription service like game pass or even playstation plus a lot more people are going to discover it and a lot more people are going to play it and probably be talking about it but brett robbins the ceo of ascendant studios was in an interview here and he comments on xbox game pass and whether we will be seeing the game specifically he was asked a couple of things here whether it will be coming and whether they should have launched it into xbox game pass day one and here is what he says certainly those services give you a wider funnel more people might engage with the game that's always good then he goes on to say yes we are talking to them about getting the game onto both of those services we don't have a date yet i'm pretty sure it's going to happen though and then his response to whether they should have launched into game pass day and dates he says this to be honest i don't know i don't know if that would have been better for us or worse because they rely on ea to handle those calls now my take is definitely would have been better this is a game that people just skipped over looked past with things that were coming out on the horizon things that were coming out in that time frame they would have launched this into game pass day one more people would have discovered it and i feel like because of the quality of the game it is fun it's a, it's a good shooter it has great mechanics and and it's different than a lot of other first person shooters out there with all the different magic mechanics people would have been talking about it sharing it around on social media so i think it definitely would have helped but i also think when it does launch into game pass eventually it will help as well and it will be coming because from what he says there but also it's ea and ea those games eventually all make their way out onto the service because of ea play so look forward to mortals of avium like i said it is a good one if you haven't played it yet probably could just wait now until eventually does drop into the service now he also talks about the xbox series s and developing for we do know the series s has less memory it takes more resources and it's more time to optimize for the weaker console compared to the series x and the playstation 5 when i guess they're starting out they're optimizing it for those two higher end machines we've seen plenty of examples way more positive examples of the series s being a great machine versus negative a lot of people only like to focus on the negative we even just are seeing now Baldur's Gate 3 where the developers are have found something from taking the time to optimize for the Series S that they're going to be able to use to develop games for the other platforms there's some magic that they figured out because of the Series S so there's tons of great stuff with the Xbox Series S but here's what he says about developing for the Series S he says the S is challenging for a developer no question about it you have memory constraints that are hard and you have to unfortunately strip out some detail in order to really get a good experience it's not a surprise it's a less powerful machine than the X so there's going to be a compromise you're making to the game to some degree it's inevitable especially as we're finishing the game there was a lot of work to make sure that it was a good experience on the s and that it looked good you're just dealing with a very different beast than the playstation 5 the xbox series x or a high-end pc so it doesn't really say anything earth shattering there it's what people would be expecting it is a less powerful machine they're going to have to be some concessions it will take more time to develop for it and make sure that the game is running smoothly for that platform or we'll just take some great developers or some good developers to look at it and change some things up and get the game running and like i said if you remember here with larry and at baldur's gate 3 as they're developing for the series as they found a way to free up some more vram that didn't have to do with just lowering the resolution of the game so there's lots of stuff that can be done and it just i guess takes the developers to dive in there and figure it all out so pretty cool stuff there but yeah of course 
with a lower end machine, changes are going to have to be made versus the game coming out on the higher end machine. All right, let's talk about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Looks like the remake is officially dead. There was a lot of stuff here that happened with this game, with the studios and just botching the development of it right when it was first announced. A lot of people had questions. One, why were they showing it off so early and why did they give it to the studio Aspire to start developing this and why did they have that initial writer on the game? But Jeff Grubb here is confirming that it is looking like this game is essentially finished and, and it's not going to be coming out. It says here that here's what Jeff Grubb says. says. I just want to clear it up. This game is not being worked on right now. Just full stop. This game is not being worked on in any way at any studio. So remember, it was announced in 2021 PlayStation console exclusive. This is going to be another game that was supposed to help carry PlayStation 4. That is not going to be there. And it was first in development by Aspire Media before Embracer shifted over to Saber Interactive in August 2022. So there's just already been a lot of stuff here. It's another game that's under Embracer who has been very bad at handling the studios that they do own, very bad at managing all of the IPs with sell-offs and layoffs and trying to get rid of stuff. So not surprising, but this is a huge hit for PlayStation specifically because it is a console exclusive. And then for people like myself who played the original, were hoping that they would create something great. I honestly hope this game doesn't come out now ever because I don't want anybody out there to ruin the legacy of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And I have terrible feeling that that's exactly what's going to happen if this game ever makes its way out under Embracer. It's just, I have no faith that they're going to be able to give us a good remake of this game. So I hope it stays dead. If the game's over and we never see it, I'll just go back and play the original because it has so many good memories and I do not want those to be ruined. But I'm going to end the video there, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button as I do a show Monday to Friday every single day covering the news and then generally some bonus episodes on the weekend. If you did enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video.